<laughs> Angela, stop shouting lies in the background. Right. Lies. <laughs> I've decided to not drink so much. Is that your new year's resolution, is it? Aye. <laughs> Never gonna happen. No, you're right. Damn right. Cool. Um... Go, yes. I'll, uh, right, hold on. Uh, can you see that, Bruce? So that that's the order. Glenallachy, Scapa, Kleinley, Kilker, and one more. I hold on, though, no, Joe. Was see the Joe the picture? Uh huh. Which one? Uh, the the photo that you had with the whiskies next. To, yeah, is that uh, the is that the chocolate you're meant to have with the whiskey though? So I'll, I'll go through all of that so we make sure we got it. it it's on. That you probably can't kind of see that in too great detail. No, no, I can't. That was the note sheet, so that went out and said which one goes. Right, um, hopefully this is working. Hopefully my uh, audio and that is all good. Ah, it seems to be fine. My audio is working on here. Um, I'll turn that music down here. So welcome along. Um, my name is... It's not working. That's not working. It's <laughs> a good start. Um, right, what we're doing here... Um, in fact, let's see if this works. Yeah, there you go. Brule foo. There you go. Something's not right, but it doesn't matter. So we're here tonight and we're doing the whiskey tasting. Um, with the guys from the, uh, guys and girls at the Whiskey and Cigar Club in Aberdeen. Now, what I'll do is I'll, um, I've got their audio and their video up here, so all it is, we can get that sorted out, and let's, let's switch our music off and see if we can hear. 
what's been said. A lot of work went into the boxes tonight. We'll, we'll uh, I'll, I'll do that as part of the yeah, no. um, <laughs> the was it? Give it another minute and we'll get started. Up to 31, although I know there's a few doublers in there. It's good. I'm quite impressed by the bar behind you. Oh, thank you, Donna. It's uh, a, a lifetime's collecting. There, there is um, Jeff, who's uh, one of the... Um, He's come along tonight. He's got a much better setup than I have. Mm-hmm. I like Scott Bowie's got a nice better setup as well. Uh, his new man room. Oh, there you go. He's a bit more whiskey, though. <laughs> <laughs> Any room needs a bit more whiskey. That's just taking uh, his red. It's definitely true. Right, I'm just going to test Glenn, that see, see you there with your flat cap on, mate. How are you? Merry Christmas. You take yourself off mute, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave. We'll leave you working on that one. I so think, what maybe. we're doing is we're just. I'm just getting the the, the okay, audio we'll samples. Get, uh, get another minute just to get the last couple of stragglers on. Um, I think we're on did, line now. Can you hear us, Joe? Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Yeah, that's a working. I've got the feeder Feliz working. Feliz Navidad, John. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> so we, we we did sell fifty five tickets for tonight, or fifty five tasting packs. Um, already a couple of folks said they they can't join us, but that, that's one of the reasons we put out the the tasting notes in advance. Those those tasting notes are the the, the distillery or the bottlers own tasting notes for them. For them. I never even saw them. Um, so not ours, but uh, we'll we'll go ahead now. There's there's thirty three folk online. We'll we'll get started. Um, Good evening, everyone, uh, and and Merry Christmas, uh, season's greeting, Feliz Navidad to everybody. Um, it, it's great to have everybody here tonight. Uh, all all in good health, I hope. All all uh, enjoying uh, some time off, hopefully. Uh, the best. Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly uh, mute everyone just for the introduction just now. Um, the an introduction for ourselves in the club tonight. Um, there are about eight of us in the club. Um, we started in two, uh, 2015 uh, as a bit of a laugh, trying new whiskey, um, getting into whiskey and, and all that it, it, it entails, all the flavours, all the amazing smells that you get out of whiskey. And, and we've been having uh, tasting sessions around at each other's houses over the last few years. And at the start of lockdown, through a, a friend of ours, Dave McBain, um, kind of giving us a bit of inspiration, we decided to do online tastings. Uh, and that's kind of culminated this year in tonight's tasting. Um, the, we run these sessions as a very interactive session. We want people to get involved. Um, there is a live stream on just now with this feed or my feed um, uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you want to ask questions and you feel comfortable shouting them out or, or in, and, and engaging with this, please, please, please do that. It, it's great that we, we get the interaction going. Um, if you want to put a question in the chat, the chat box is there and we'll be checking that regularly. Um, or if you're on YouTube or following us on YouTube, you can... Uh, on the live stream you can put questions in there and they'll get relayed to us as well so um please if you have anything you you if we when we're going through the tasting process of of the whiskies tonight if if you get something on the nose and the taste and the palate on the finish shout it out and and we can have a chat about it if this is um if you've been to one of our tastings before, um, welcome back. Uh, if this is your first time with us, um, welcome along. It's it's brilliant to have you, and we really appreciate you coming along. Um, whether you're new to whiskey or whether you're an old hand at it, um, these sessions are fun. We're we're amateurs in whiskey tasting. Um, I think it's really important to point out there are no wrong thoughts or feelings or anything in terms of the nose and the taste, etc. in whiskey. Um, you get what you get. It's it's very subjective to yourself um, and, and what you're getting out of the whiskey itself. So um, if you get something, you get it. That That's it's in there. So that's brilliant. Um, in terms of thanks for tonight, um, uh, the, the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop, of course, we've, we've uh, worked with Aberdeen Whiskey Shop throughout these online tastings. They've provided the drams um, for tonight. It's, a, it's an excellent se- uh, selection of, of whiskey tonight. Um, you've seen all of what we've got. Nothing's blind tasted tonight, which is our kind of normal way of doing it. Um, 
so you know everything that's there. Um, as we go through them, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the distillery, a little bit about the whiskey um, or the provenance around the whiskey itself. Um, I, I, and we'll, we'll look into the, the, the price of those whiskeys. Uh, I think that is on the note sheet. But we'll also look into the availability of them or the scarcity of them and why that's the, the, these whiskeys are like that or those bottles are like that. Um, so that's Aberdeen Whiskey Shop. Big, big shout out to Nick, as, as always, for his support. Um, Coco Ooze, who is a local Aberdeen luxury chocolatier, um, they have smells like gorgeous, the, by the way. The chocolates for today. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop and Coco's, uh, Nick and Jamie, have worked together to, to, to pair up the five whiskies with the five chocolates. Um, and, and, and I really do think they, they both complement each other um, very, very well. Um, Bruce, Bruce Cameron, who's online with us tonight, uh, Brulafu, um, he's providing the help for, for some RIT stuff and for doing the live stream, for the, the process for that. Um, uh, Kev Mitchell uh, uh, at um, Border Digital, you can see at the bottom of our tasting mat. Um, oh, sorry if that was a wee bit noisy there. Uh, live TV. Um, uh, the, uh, Kevin Mitchell at Border Digital for some of our IT support again and some of the social media stuff. Um, the, the guys in the club, uh, this isn't possible without everyone in the team pulling together for it. Um, we've got 55 people uh, or 55 tasting packs we sold, 55 times five bottles. Uh, it's, it's an awful lot to, to produce and, and a, a big shout out to, to Bon, Phil and Barry for their help on that tonight. I, and biggest uh, thank you tonight for, for, for kind of helping everything is to my better half, Susan. Um, it, none of this is possible without Suze. Um, endless patience, endless kicking me in that when I've kind of went down on it and thought oh, that's, that's a lot of work Susan's done the design of the box that you see uh, that, that it's came in so fantastic bit of work there um, the notes on the back and everything Susan has, has been a, a massive help and inspiration with that type of stuff so thank you to Susan who's sitting over there just now um, and, and thank you guys in the club and all, all the help that we've got in, in pulling these sessions together <laughs> As I said, we've got an interactive session. Five excellent whiskies tonight. If this was a standalone whiskey night, I think we probably paid the right amount of money. The fact that we're getting chocolates with it blows my mind. It's, it's, it's great value for money. Really super luxury chocolates. Five top class drams. Um, and, and we'll the theme tonight of whiskey and uh, chocolate pairing. Um, it, it's its not a new theme generally within whiskey, uh, with the whiskey world. Uh, and, and, and pairing whiskey with food, uh, we had a, a, a session as, as part of the club a few months, a few years ago, where, where that was the theme. Everyone took along a whiskey and everyone took along food that they thought paired well with it. Um, that, so whiskey pairs with food very well. Chocolate pairs with booze very well. Um, uh, it's a very common thing. You see chocolate served with different types of, uh, you know, your cognacs, your after dinner drinks, etc. And what we're doing is we're bringing together the whiskey that we love with the chocolates that we love, and, and we're, that's what we're getting. It's a tour of Scotland and the whiskey regions we've got. Um, we've got um, Glenallachy from uh, Speyside, the heart of Speyside, just outside of Aberlour. We've got Scapa from Orkney. Uh, so that's an islands region. We've got... Uh, um, Clean Leash, so that's Highlands, that's up in Brora. We're Kilkerran, so that's down the Campbellton Peninsula. And then finishing us off, we've got Bowmore um, from Isla. So we'll, we've, we've got a wide range of the Scottish whisky regions, if you're not familiar with them. Certainly ask a question, we can go into them a, a little bit about that um, as we go through the night. But we've also got a tour of the flavours. We've got sweet, we've got uh, and light, we've got heavy and rich, we've got oily, we've got um, the, the, the sherry influence, we've got bourbon cask influence so really if this is one of your first times tasting whiskey or, or if you're an old hand you're going to get a great amount of whiskey tonight again point out as i have done on the introductory notes that the, the whiskies tonight are all bar one are cask strength um the, the first one that we hit tonight is 8.9 percent so almost 61 percent abv very strong but to me, they don't all taste very strong, but as you drink that kind of strength of, of whiskey, um, the influence it might have on you is, is going to be a lot more than if we were drinking 40% whiskey. So take it easy, take it slow. If you want to break or if you want to have a drink of water sort of thing, that's that's totally fine. Um, we have given everyone pipettes um, in order to, to kind of add water to it. Uh, the whiskies don't do anything with that yet. We'll, we will touch on it as we get to that first whiskey tonight. 
and how I would recommend that you you do that and, and add the water um, uh, slowly, tiny little bit at a time. But as I said, when we get to that first drink tonight, the uh, the will 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 hit on that. Um, so I think of anything else I've got. I'm going to do a quick poll uh, first of all, uh, just uh, to see what is everybody here for tonight. So are we here for oh, right. whiskey? Are we here for the chocolates? Or are we here for for both of them? So I'll, I'll go ahead and launch the poll. If you if you want to vote on um, that, a wee bit of fun to start. I'm with. just here for the banter, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, and we'll let that poll run for a couple of seconds more. I was just going to ask: Is there not a um, "I'm here for the banter" poll option? Um, no, there's no there's no banter here, Bruce. You've come to the wrong one. I, I was <laughs> going to say you're, you're, you're at the wrong shop for that. Possibly. Oh, well, fair but, enough. Especially um, when Joe's hosting. Uh, there's not a lot you can do there, unfortunately. So 31 or 32 votes there. I'll end that poll and, and, and share the results. So, interestingly, uh, it's a pretty much eeksy peeksy split between uh, the whiskey, obviously, or whisk, obviously, is my spelling. Uh, whisk. Uh, let me begin. Or, or can I have both? So, yeah, ev- everything is there on the table. Um, Hi, Paul. Um, go ahead it's now and, uh, good to see you there. I just saw the, the message you sent through on, on Facebook. That's amazing. Um, Paul from South Devon. Nay whiskey. Nay. Yes, brilliant. Any E. That's nigh. Any E whiskey in hand. Just a Coors Light, but here in the spirit. That's a good one. Good to have you. Glen of the Rocks. Um, beautiful colour on this on this dram it's kind of got a, a, a golden but a slightly pinky hue to it and, and that pinkish hue in, in the liquid comes from the type of cask it's been in um, so, so this whiskey is a premier crew class uh, cask dram cask dram and what does that mean premier crew, crew class it means it's um, spent time in a red wine cask yeah. um, premier crew means it's one of the, the, the more uh, prominent uh, houses uh, French um, wine houses uh, and you're talking about something that's possibly like a Mouton Rocheo um, red wine cask. That's that's the type of influence that you're looking at on on the whiskey. And in, in, take a glass for me. The number one. Um, so uh, a beautiful colour on it. It's sixty point nine percent. It is very strong. This one. However, I think when we get into the nose on it, I don't think that you, you actually pick up a huge amount of that that full hit of alcohol you normally would with that with a dram of this strength. So feel free to unmute yourself now and and, and chip in. Um, let, let's get into the nose on, on uh, dram number one. She was. What um, percentage did you say? Sorry, Joe. Yeah, sixty point nine percent ABV, Barry. Thank you. This is, this is a ten-year-old from Glenallan. It's certainly a rose. They saw a hint to the colour against a white background. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, you, you do pick up that that kind of, that little reddish tinge to it. Um, it it's interesting as as we go through the. The, the notes on it as well. So I've I've taken notes, um, done taste a tasting of these drams tonight, and taken notes. Uh, I was sore. Well, you all have the the um, the note sheet that was sent out uh, with with the emails if you've printed it out or otherwise. Those are, as I said at the beginning, those are the distillery notes. Um, the the notes that I have are my own ones, but what what I want everyone to do is is contribute, shout out what you're getting from it. So, um, dive in with the notes. Uh, what's everybody getting on this one? What's the hints that they're getting? There's definite honey. I've I've got honey as part of my notes. Yeah, Ruth. Yeah, it's put on. I I get on. I get I get a very fruity nose on this one. Huge, huge amount of strawberry and raspberry here for me. Fruits, fruits, fruits. I've no idea what this. You need to take yourselves off mute, if anybody's It does actually in. smell really nice. It's honey, raspberry, strawberry, raspberry, floral as well. And yeah, strawberry would be as well, Joe. Right, right. It's Caroline. I've just joined now. Which one we're drinking? So we're on the Glenalachy just now, Caroline. So that's that's the first drama of the night, and it, mm. and it paired. This drama is paired with the uh, um, 
chocolate raspberry, milk chocolate raspberry. So in, in your tasting packs, if they're still in there, it's one of, I was going to say the one on the left-hand side, but I guess that depends on your perspective. But it's the one with the, the little red um, kind of sprinkling on the top no of way. it. Right. Um, uh, to be honest, I haven't tasted the drams with the chocolate. Um, I, I've had a little sampling of them. I haven't really got into it fully, no. but they are, they are kind of very... They're, they're matched in terms of... <laughs> Any any other comments on the nose on this one? I say aye, nay whiskey, nay whiskey in your hand. I I, I get almost that, and and the, the the reference I had was like a, a fruit chew it, like a pink uh, opal fruit type of smell as well on the nose. Um, and then about you can get that red wine tannins, Joe. You know, like the tannins off a red wine. You can definitely get that through even through the nose without tasting it. I think I think it is. I get that, yeah. I, 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 I get that. It's coming more in the the actual taste. Taste it, um, and and I think when we get to the palate side, we will get the the tannins coming through a little bit more. Um, Have we had any of these whiskies before on any of our other other tastings? So it's a good question, Barry. Uh, we did have. The, I'll set them up. We, we did have the a, a similar bottle to this, and we came from a different cask uh, of. Glenallachie Premier Crew Class on, I think, our Speyside Premium tasting. So that, that was three, four months ago. Um, and, and this, is, this is, a, is a different dram. I looked back at my notes on that, and there wasn't a huge overlap on it. Some of the notes were, and, and I think that's probably more of the underlying distillery oh. notes. Um, but, yeah, we, we've, had, we've not had any of the other sort. So, right. Last couple of notes from me on the nose. I think it's quite creamy. Um, almost a lemon polish, um, lemon oil polish. And then, and then a wee bit of toasted almond too. So we'll, we'll dive in now with the first one. Uh, Slange. Cheers, everyone. Slange. Oh. Oh, uh, cheers, everyone. Big, big hit of alcohol there. Um, you need to get wrong there. I'll tell you, really nice, fresh on the tongue, I think. A, a really, for, for something that's sixty-one percent alcohol, or, or or not far off sixty-one percent alcohol, I think that could taste a lot more. I think it tastes quite like fresh. I think it has a really nice arrival on it there, um, front of the tongue. Dive in for your second nip or your second wee sip there. Take your um, short, short sips as well. I wouldn't take anything kind of overly um, large with, with a dram this strong. Um, if you are going to add water... Could have said that to start off with. ...until you've had that first taste, just to make sure that you, you, you couldn't kind of come back to it on that full strength. As soon as you add water, you can't take it out again. It's it. Once it's in, it's it's in for good. Um, so, uh, notes on the, on the taste, what's uh, everybody getting taste-wise? I would say, Joe, a big hit of stewed apple. Stewed apples, good. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Anyone else getting anything on the, on the taste for this one? Not on the taste, Joe. Uh, Joe. Um, Kev, Kev Mitchell's asking, is the colour of... against strawberry. Is the colour natural? I think, oh. I think that fruitiness keeps coming through. I'll, I'll admit myself. On the second <laughs> one, second or second... <laughs> So the, um, the, the tannins coming through there. Sorry, there we go. The tannins start to come through a wee bit more um, for me, um, and, it, and it's very faint, and it's more at the back of the mouth that you're at, that I'm actually that's getting. And that, and that's that that red wine cask influence on 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 the stram itself. Um, Joe, um, Kev yes, Missile actually is the colour natural, um, and then there's nothing being added to it. Is it just a natural colour from the red wine cask? Is that? Yeah. yeah, so this one is unchill filtered. It's not went through chill filtration. Good. And it's had no colour added. It's natural colour. So that's one of kind of the Glenallachy distillery hallmarks is everything that they produce, unchill filtered and no colour added to it. This so is lovely. It's, 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 I think as you as you have a second or third sip on it and you realise this is 60% or 61% alcohol, I don't think it plays up to that level of that strength. Um, I think it's very smooth for a 61%er. Um, on, on the finish, very warming for me. It's got a really nice mouthfeel. Um, red fruits again coming through and, and then quite a creamy finish as well. Do you know if there's any bottles around? 
So this 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 one this one you can still buy. So this is an Aberdeen whiskey shop exclusive from the Glenalkey distillery. So if, if you did want to buy this one, um, you can go through the Aberdeen whiskey shop or visit the Aberdeen whiskey shop. They have a website which is in in our email trails as well. Um, this one would be ninety pounds a bottle, um, sixty one percent. It's a ten year old. Um, there's not many of the Premier Crew class uh, casks on the go or coming out of Glenallachy just now. They do tend to focus more on, on the sherry cask style for their single cask bottlings, such so a PX and your Oloroso casks. Um, this one is is a very nice dram, I think. Um, but I've, we've also got a, a chocolate to have with it. I don't know if anybody else has had that. Has, has anyone tried their chocolate? Say, when can we taste the chocolate? <laughs> I'm going to try it now. Anytime. So here's, here's oh, the chocolate. Oh, 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 Goes in a taste. Don't care how much you have. Might be fine with the chocolate. <laughs> Get that taste with it. Oh my god, mm. it's a lovely taste, that. Oh my god, that is so good. So good. That's a lovely chocolate, that. And I, I think those oh. complaints. Oh. Uh, oh. um, Sorry, you know what I'm getting? I'm actually getting. I'll tell you what I'm getting from it. Is Turkish delight. The kind of roses that, you know, that. The kind of. The flowery Turkish delight. That kind of, I'm getting that kind of floral. Right. There, is, there, is, there, is, there is a bit of that in there. My apologies, I'm having to mute you because you're, there's a big echo when you come off mute, mate. Um, I think that chocolate complements it very well there. Um, any, any other thoughts on it about, you know, Bruce has got that kind of rose hip, Turkish delight type of style to anyone else? <laughs> That's excellent. So on, on this one, if, if you... Uh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Dram, uh, Matt's put on the chat there. I feel the dram hits with strawberries and cream and the chocolate really enforces it. Yeah, I totally agree with you there, um, Matt. Um, uh, I think June had put on a, a, a question just saying, seems very much similar to the Glenalachy 15 and the 10-year-old Batch 4. Yeah, the the, uh, the cast strength Batch 4 um, had that as part of the Glenalachy tasting a few weeks ago. Absolutely phenomenal. It, it was superb. Um the, the, the chocolate itself, this comes from Kokoos. Um, it's a raspberry milk chocolate truffle. Oh. Um, Kokoos and Aberdeen, again, check out their website. Uh, a bit late to order. Well, it's, it's, it's quite early to order for Christmas 2021. Um, but a wide, wide range of, of chocolates available there. Um, we've got a, a combination tonight of truffles and discs. Um this one, that, that soft chocolate truffle, um, re oh, such a lovely, rich flavour, but also at the same time, again, a, a pretty light kind of um, chocolate as well. It's not too heavy, not too cloying, uh, cloying of, of it. So um, uh, if you want to add water to this one, I did add water when I was doing my notes a couple of nights ago. Um, I can tell you what I got. To. If you are going to add water, um, use the pipette that was in the tasting pack and only add one or two drops. A little, little bit goes a long way. Um, what, what you're doing with the water is you're, you're, you're changing the chemicals or the, the chemistry within the, the, the whiskey itself. Um, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're releasing different flavours. Um, when you add a little bit of water, you're obviously reducing that alcohol percentage as well. So it will come down a little bit from 61%, but a couple of drops of water is not going to make a huge difference. However, it does change the flavours. Um, when I added water on, on the tasting, and, and I don't know if anybody else is adding water tonight, when I when I did add water, I got a little bit less red fruit on the nose, um, but I did get more salted caramel. Um, I think that kind of almost developed in there. On the palate, it actually became more fiery, um, and which is a bit unusual for adding water. You'd think it would dilute it, but in, for, for whatever reason, the chemical balance changed, and it became a little, got a little bit of chilli, uh, on, on the taste, uh, um, kind of chilli um, flakes. And then it was quite oaky as well. Uh, and finish, again, I got quite a hot and spicy finish out of it um, with elements of, of almost grass notes as well in the background. So it did, did change quite dramatically. Um, if anyone is having having it or trying it with water, um, please feel free to share or, or tell us what, what your kind of thoughts are. Um, is it, yeah. I'm sorry. 
One one thing I will add, Jeff's added that um, a lot of what comes out in the water. I totally agree with that. That a hundred percent get that in the kind of the taste on it. Um, I have put on the chat there our, our Facebook page, uh, Whiskey and Cigar Club. We are on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's if you could if you're taking any photographs of tonight, your setup, the chocolates, the whiskies, um, the screen itself. Um, put it on. We've got a, a, a thread that we've put that on there um, <laughs> for photographs tonight. Or if you if you're on Instagram, we're also on Instagram, uh, Whiskey and Cigar Club, um, or Instagram.com forward slash Whiskey and Cigar Club. Please post pictures, tag us, and that really appreciate it. I hate strawberries, but that chocolate was stunning. Donald Mackay. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one. That it was a raspberries, wasn't it? But, um, paired very well, I think, with the with the whiskey as well. So, any other comments on this one before we we kind of do a little bit of a, a poll of it? I see. You know, you know me with water. Um, I'm not a not a big fan of putting water in, but I left my little bit at the end there and a couple of drops in. But it does make it quite. It brings it brings it to more what I expected it to be for being a, a cask mm. strength. It does make it that bit more fiery and mm. a, a bigger hit with the water in, which is very unusual. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I was pretty surprised by that. I tried it and was like, "Oh, that's a lot, a lot of flavour coming through there. A lot of heat in that in that uh, yeah. the mouthfeel with it with the taste. Fair, a fair bit of tang. I it does indeed. Right, so let's move now, and we'll get a. A quick taste in there. So what we've done with the, the, the polling that we do normally, we, we, we take a poll and say, what did you score your whiskey? It, it was going to get way too complicated if we started saying, what did you think of the chocolate? What did you think of the whiskey? What did you think of the pen? So we're just going to keep going and scoring it on our whiskey. Um, usual scoring, five to ten, five out of 10, up to 10 out of 10. What, what did you think of that whiskey itself? We will revisit later on and say, what was your favourite pairing of the night? Uh, as, as we do the poll, so you can get a chance to vote on that. So we'll go ahead and I'll launch that just now. So how did you like whiskey number one? Glenallachie, 10-year-old premier crew class, available for £90 a bottle, from, only from, exclusively from the Aberdeen Whiskey <laughs> Shop. Um, that's that's pretty much the only dram that's a bit widely available or is available really of of the five tonight. I was doing um, nine, a nine or ten for me. We will say what what is and what isn't available um, and why it isn't available. The, um, for me, that um, initial hit is going to be a tickly throat. I'm on mute. That's 33 <coughs> folk void. So we'll go and end the poll there. Uh, 8 out of 10, the most popular score for that. Down to 6, up to 9. Um, fairly, fairly wide range of selection. That's I think that's, that was an excellent Even. start of DRAM. Uh, I think it gives us a good introduction as well to the to the pairing side of things and, and the match up with the, the whiskey and the chocolate. <laughs> I think it's a good scene setter. I, th I think it's going to lead us in pretty well into number two, which is, is a different type of dram, different style, um, and a different type of chocolate. Okay. okay, so I have to say I'm slightly worried. We've got one in our online basket already. Don't have enough money for the other four to be at that standard. Oh, well, I, I think that was an excellent dram. That it's good to get your feedback on it. And uh, happy shopping, of course. <laughs> So uh, we'll move on now to, to drum number two. So this one is uh, from the Scapa Distillery in Orkney, Orkney uh, to the north, uh, off the north coast of Scotland, over the Pentland Firth, is uh, uh, two distilleries. One is Highland Park and one is Scapa. This is the Distillery Reserve Collection uh, is where this is from. So Scapa is owned by the Perno, is part of the Perno Ricard family. Um, and at Strathisle Distillery, they do a lot of distillery bottlings. They are distillery reserve collections, and this is one from there. So, this is a this comes from a five hundred ml bottle. Um, a small bottle. It's the the price I've got for it is one hundred and fifty quid for a five hundred ml bottle. Um, there, there certainly isn't a lot of this going about. It's a single cask. Um, it's it's limited in terms of its um, availability. Um, I haven't been able to find it anywhere online. We, we've got it through the whiskey shop and uh, Strathisle Distillery or, or, or Pernod Ricard for it. 
Uh, it's from a first fill bourbon cask. So when you hear that, you should start thinking about what kind of flavor profile a bourbon cask will impart on a spirit uh, in, in terms of the, to the normal kind of standard notes. So you, you, you would think of your, your almost your vanillas, your, your floweriness, etc. Um, and it's paired tonight with a, a salted caramel disc. So the, some of the flavor notes that we'll get will, will match off between the bourbon cask sweetness and the saltiness there. Now, we, we are, you know, we have five tastes that we, that we can get. Uh, the sweet, the salty, the sour, bitter, and umami, the savory side of things. So when you match them up against each other, they, they should pair off quite well. And, and I think they do in this instance as well. 54.1% alcohol on, uh, or alcohol by volume on this draft. Mm. So again, cast strength. Uh, take it easy. Don't go mad, mad with it. Um, it. It does have a, probably a slightly stronger smell than the, the previous dram, the Glenallachy, which was 61%. So there is a bit of a difference there. Um, first fill bourbon cask. So we'll get on with the nose and just... Uh, you can smell the bourbon. You can smell the bourbon. Sorry, George. Did you say it was fifty-four point four percent? Fifty-four point one percent, Mark, for this for this Point one. Sorry, uh, the scatter. So beautiful golden color. Totally telling you what it is uh, in, in terms of uh, the caskets from. Um, now, I'll be honest with you. I don't have the details of whether this one's been chill filtered or whether it's uh, color added. I, I don't think there's colour added to that. Um, the, the reason you add colour added is for a consistency um, and, and a wider range of, of bottlings um, or, a, or a more, a larger bottling um, run. This is a single cask this comes from. Uh, it's only one cask that's produced it. There's no benefit to add colouring to this, especially as, as it's, it's, it's got a beautiful golden colour to it already. If you add anything it to it, it's a caramel colour, E150, um, that'll only detract from that colour itself. 54.1%, um, so strong. It will be strong on the nose. It's not. It's smooth on the nose. I didn't think it was quite as strong as what I was expecting. It's not as... <laughs> I, I, I think that's got, that got a milder yeah. on yep. your nose. It's, it doesn't smell, it doesn't, uh, nose is 54%. L a lot lighter, a lot smoother. Sort of. mm. so, I just uh, get loads and loads of floral notes from it, but it's, it's yeah. not like the rose, it's more like daisy or, or tulip or something. It's, it's that kind of really light, fresh floral. Right, fresh, excuse me, fresh floral. <laughs> I'm glad this wasn't the fifth round. Um, yeah, <laughs> fresh floral, definitely. I get, I've, I've got that as part of the taste almost, and this one is, is more of those floral notes. And I think if you've printed out our tasting mat, um, in the middle of it is our um, kind of the club zone and um, flavour wheel. So you will be able to say, like, oh, I'm getting floral, is it dried floral, leafy, natural, artificial, etc. And that's there to help with, with um, helps us um, and it hopefully it helps you in terms of being able to identify what you're smelling or what you're tasting in the whiskey that you may not otherwise have been able to and and, and that's the, probably the biggest thing that we've mm. all got from um, our experience in going to whiskey tastings or hosting whiskey tastings is that ability to for what we get out of the whiskey verbalize and kind of put put, put the kind of descriptors around what we're we're tasting um Anyone else get anything on the nose for this one? I think we've had uh, um, kind of light, fresh floral there. It's like a white okay. wine. I can smell like crayons. Crayons? <laughs> Weirdly. That's, that's what you're getting, Mark. That's what you're getting. Crayons in there too. That's good. I don't know whether it's because I read it's it or viola. not. It's definitely got the green apples and the almonds. Yeah. I'm not going to look at the bit of paper before I sniff the next time, though. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's too easy to look at that and think, yeah, I'm getting that. Huh. In a couple of instances tonight, I, I would I would pretty much have the back end drums, the Kilkerran, especially the Kilkerran. I'd be more, I'm, I'm like, it's difficult to go away from what the tasting notes in on that sheet is because it, it's pretty much nailed on what, what you're getting from it. But in, in this case, I'm, I'm getting orchard fruit, um, a pe peach taste, a uh, peach type of smell. Also apples. Um, I, yeah. One of my favourite flavour identifiers in whiskey is, is green apples mm -hmm. for some reason I, I just yeah, love that. that smell and 
I, I get a little bit of that in here as well. But not as much as some of the other drams we've had on the tastings. I think the Mortlich or the, the Bildorne. But it's definitely there as well. I, I think there's a bit of maltiness too in, in, in the flavour. Um, I said green, green apples, but somebody disagreed with me. I, I'm not going to go against Angela, so... <laughs> you woos. Yeah. But uh, as well as that, vanilla that, that comes through from on the, the the cask itself that it's been in, that first fill bourbon cask. So up first, for me. first fill is 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 the first time that that cask has been used to store whiskey. You will get second fill and in some cases third fill. So that, that cask, if it's a second fill, has already had a liquid in it. That liquid's been discharged and they've filled it or charged it with another liquid. So that's why that terminology of first fill, second fill, third fill. Each time you do that, you, you're changing the liquid you put in. You could put in the exact same liquid, but you get something different out of it because the wood has given something up to that mm. liquid in the first instance that isn't there anymore. Um, you can breathe somewhat new life into a, into a cask by, by toasting it and charring it. Um, but the, as you go through that second fill, third fill, you, the, the the influence it will have on the liquid will probably diminish over time. So, vanilla sweetness as well. Let's jump in there. Slange, cheers, Go everyone. Slange, slange. So Matt's put on there. Loads of regal icing on the nose for me. My first tasting note on the, the taste side of things on this one was ice and sugar. I, I get a kind of ice and sugar, that dib-dab, effervescent, sweetie, and lolly type of thing in there um, on, on the taste in this one. That's that's the hit I get, ice and sugar, dib-dabs, that kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Once, once, once again, it's maybe just me because I don't mind a, a car strength dram, but that doesn't taste as strong as I was expecting for a 54. It's... Mm -hmm. no. This one, you can hold it in your mouth a little bit longer. You can you can put it through it around your mouth and, and kind of coat it all the different, um, you know, the palate, et cetera. And you will start to pick more up in it there. Um, to, we're, as, we're kind of, as it's a whiskey and chocolate pair, we'll have that cho uh, milk, chocolate, and salt, uh, salted caramel uh, disc that we can try it with so um, let's let's go ahead and jump in and see how that that uh, complements the whiskey my uh, <coughs> my tongue's still burning from that whiskey Ooh, that so, can't taste it. <laughs> Only in the bottom again I'm not getting anything for really, that chocolate. Really nice chocolate there, the malted chocolate. The salty note coming through on it, absolutely. Um, going to go back in with the whiskey and see how it tastes together. I think that'll work because the vanilla. Mm. It's really salty. I think you get, I get more tropical fruits coming through now. Um, um, that, that pineapple, I think that may be one of the notes on the nose there as well. Um, and the, in the kind of official tasting notes. So, what was there to make of the, the, the chocolate and, and the pairing and the, the, the match-up with the, the whiskey? It's not exactly a bounty, yeah, to be fair. Getting, um, a lot of coconut notes coming through that now, a lot more. Now, now that you see it, yeah, uh, Mark, getting that, that coconut with the, um, with the salt, almost, I don't know if it's the salt or the caramel side of things. Families off to the shops. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you're, if, if whatever else is getting from it. Um, feel free to shout out or put it in the chat. Lorraine's put there yet yeah, getting pineapple. That's good. I definitely get a bit of that tropical side of things. That mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm definitely, I'm definitely getting tropical fruit after the tasting with the chocolate. Great pairing. Bad taste and hunch there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to the the official notes on it. Uh, in, in the chart that uh, everybody got sent out. Very it warm. does say that you get the, the, the tropical pineapple in there, and I think it, to me, it's more in the taste than in the nose, and I think that salt, that, that salted caramel does pull it through a bit as well. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, everyone, it's an interactive session. Um, I can talk for two hours about whiskey, no problem at all. You can. I can, I can promise you that. So uh, please put it into the chat if you've got any comments or shout things out. It's it's really, we'll learn more. You'll learn more from, from that type of interaction and, and that kind of analysis of the whiskey that you've got as well. Um, it is normal that the first couple of drams are, are a wee bit slower and it's a little bit more talking. By the time we get around the fifth dram, I think I was speaking to Mark today, I, I, it's difficult to keep everybody quiet. Um, I wonder why. I wonder why. So um, I think I'm going to have another couple more sips of that for that Scapa. It was really nice. He's Scapa like, he's like a couple more sips of like finished mine already. Um, lovely distillery. So I used to have, That's lovely. Uh, I think only there's kind of two standard expressions. Uh from Scapa and the rest are you will be independently bottled ones that you can get as well. Yeah, it's nice. <clears throat> if you were able to get a bottle of this, Joe, how much would that set you back? But, um, so for five hundred mil, it's one hundred and fifty quid. So uh, uh, it's an expensive bottle of whiskey. This one, price Um it, it is. Uh, that is good can, like can, you that. Different, can you get different whiskies? You know, it's uh, 17 year old, it's got a bit of age to it. It's uh, an unusual age for a scapper. Um, certainly, you'll, you'll tend to find most scapper that comes out on the market is a lot bit younger than that. Um, regarding water and adding water to this, so I, I added water as part of my tasting notes again. Um, I got more caramel coming through in the flavour uh, on the nose. My my note on the when you add in the tasting on the taste when you added water on the palate was um tropical, really explosive tropical. So I'm I'm going to add a little bit of water to this just to see if I can relive that note. To see if I can get it there. Just a couple of drops. Don't add, you can uh, don't add too much. You can always kind of add a little bit more you can never take out. Just give it a wee swirl around, a wee bit of time to come together. Um the finish uh I, I think changed. I thought it was quite a nice finish as, as the scapa was it's on its own. Um, I think you've got quite a decent length of finish there. Um, again, more apple, sharp apple this time. Uh, on the, the finish with adding water, I, I felt it was short, but it, it was quite a, a, a coating as well. Hmm. So Lorraine's got uh, the scapa 16 was a stunning dram, gutted when they discontinued it. I completely agree with that. We, we were lucky enough to get that. Um, four years ago, I think it was probably what I tasted at Cask. Um, Ali Mathers did, and and all loved the scap by the sixteen. Um, absolutely, it's, it's disappointing they've now replaced it to the fourteen. I think they've replaced it with. And Ross called the Siren as well. They've got a non-age statement, one do they? Yeah, they have the, the non-age statement. Um, Ross has commented there. Hint of cola cubes, very smooth, great combo with the chocolate, lovely dram, very fresh. Completely agree with that. Yeah. But it's a really nice taste, um, tasting whiskey, this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll stand by that. A wee, bit, a wee bit of water, more tingle at the front end, um, and, and, and that tropical note coming through. Really, really, really nice. I'll finish the last of my chocolate. What do you feel about? Excuse me. I'm loving your tasting notes today, Joe. A little lovely tingle on the front end. Mm -hmm. um, let's just. But you should you should start writing these tasting notes and sending them back to the distilleries. I bet you they'd put them on the box. <laughs> I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah add a little bit of water for a, a little tingle on the front end. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, the, it's almost almost pornographic, Joe. Seriously, get it's, a grip. It's <laughs> almost. <laughs> it's not me. I'm getting in trouble. I'm describing what I'm getting on the taste. You lot are interpreting it, or some of you are interpreting it a particular way. But I do think this one's got a creamy finish in the mouth. <laughs> okay. Right. So, well, you did say it was a bit salty. <laughs> right, we'll go ahead and get the pool up for that one. See, I prefer the I preferred the first one over the Yes, over this one. The first one, it was a bit stronger. Uh, fin, fin bar Saunders and his double on Saunders, by the looks of it. Uh, okay, so the second whiskey. How did everybody score the second whiskey? Five, um, six, seven, eight, nine, mm -hmm. ten. I'm going to give us in, a in seven. the scoring system. There, really nice. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this camera. I'm going to give it a seven. It's no old Pulteney. No, it's no old Pulteney. That just now felt not not surprising. Not surprising. Donald, we're disappointed, Donald, that you, you missed last uh, last well, earlier on this month's tasting, where we did actually have an old Bultney on the menu. Um, 
I know, and you picked the worst one of the lot. <laughs> I, I don't mind it. Twelve. Twelve is an excellent dram, and, and it was under thirty quid, so it, so it ticked the box from that from our perspective. Okay, so that's thirty or thirty threes voted so far. We'll go ahead. Thirty one or thirty three. We'll go ahead and end it there. Just get a little bit filthy in here just now. Um, old Pulteney was uh, under twenty five, wasn't it? So. It was actually in Asda for twenty pounds at the time, which is a cracking drum for that mm-hmm. price, really. Yeah. Just looking back at what my notes were for it. Oh, partly I think you did thirty-two. So yeah, you're definitely getting it cheaper. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a, the poll results for that one. Um, eight out of ten, most common score or most popular score. I yeah. give it a seven. So fives, a couple of nines on there. So yeah, <laughs> good. And yeah, a solid eight out of ten drum. Yeah, good, 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 good stuff. So perfect. That was that was drum number two. So drum number one, the Glenallachy from Speyside, um, finished. Or, or, Speyside's a lovely part of the, t- the, the, the town, class, part of Scotland. Classy. Class. That's actually where my dog come from. Drum number two, Scapa from Orkney. So that's your island's drum um, from a first fill bourbon cask. Uh, now moving on to drum number three. So this is an interesting drum, really, as I think all are. Um, of course, this one is paired with the. Dark chocolate orange cup truffle or the dark chocolate oh, truffle. So, you already... this, oh, really looking forward oh. to this one. I, I like uh, chocolate orange. This is from the North Star Independent Bottlers. It's called a Lynch Isle. Now, if you do anagrams, Lynch Isle is an anagram of Klein Leash. So, that's the distillery where this one comes from. It's a Klein Leash. Now, Klein Leash is a. a, a Distillery in the Highland region. It's in Brora. A very popular distillery uh, in, in terms of collectability. Uh, this bottle came out a few weeks ago, um, priced at £125 a bottle. Um, it's a 20 year old from Klein Leash or Lynch Isle, as they call it. I don't think this is available anymore. I could be wrong. Um, if someone wants to go ahead and check uh, the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop or Whiskey Exchange or anything, you may, you may find I'll do it. Now. Um, but this one did shift very fast when I, when I was speaking to Nick. Um, Klein leashes are very popular, very collectible. They have a, a, a pretty, um, a pretty kind of, uh, well-understood flavour profile or, or, or feel to them. Um, and we'll come on to that as we get into the kind of the back end of the taste and the finish on this one there's a particular characteristic that that Klein Leash has um, that you, you can identify it if anyone who was on our, our tasting where we did the Sirius uh, also from North Star um, so that was Phil what was the age of the Sirius or Ricky was it 31? 31 31 year old Sirius now that was a teaspoon uh, Klein Leash. I don't think it was a teaspoon. It was a it was a blended Klein Leash there, where they'd taken a very old bottle of Klein Leash, a very old cask of Klein Leash, um, blended it with another uh, single malt, uh, and and produced a, 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 a serious thirty one year old, which was absolutely phenomenal. It was one hundred and twenty, one hundred twenty five pound. Ricky uh, felt when it came out, very difficult to get a hold of now. Limited run, but another top, top dram, and it was a Klein Leash. So this this one is really interesting, though. Um, it's a sherry cask. It's been matured in a sherry cask, but it's been finished in a brandy cask, a French brandy cask. So that totally has changed the flavour profile on it. And I, my, my kind of first thought on this one was very interesting nose to it. Yeah. Um, it it's quite... Hmm. What's the mean, ABV? The ABV on this one is 53.3%. So again, cask strength, 53.3, though not too high that it's going to frighten you. I'm supposed to get up early in the morning. Again, as I think a, guys have, uh, a few people have said in the, in the previous one, the Scapa, which was 54.1, so just a little bit strong. You don't particularly get the full hit of the alcohol on this one, I don't think. So. I've I've been through the usual suspects, House of Malt, uh, Malt Masters, all that, and they're all sold out, out of stock so far. There you go. So uh, Leighton's got this. It's, it's a rubber. So Tony, 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 I'll just jump to that one. Tony has said it's, it's available for £127.50 on the Tin Tine Drum uh, whiskey website. So a very good whiskey website um, if you're looking to buy whiskey. It's a whiskey shop, of course. Um, so this one, yeah, very interesting nose. I, I would almost agree with, with, with what Leighton said there, um, Leighton and Event have said, which is it's a little bit it's funky. It's mm-hmm. got a funk to it. 
It's an unusual nose, but I think this this is for me one of the great joys of whiskey is that you've got an interesting taste or an interesting nose on this one. And if you give it, you get that first, second, third nose in. And as you start to nose it a little bit more, you almost move past your first impression of it. And you start to build up a bigger picture of what that whiskey smells like, what it might taste like. Story and, this. And, and this one, I said, you know, my first note was interesting. Then, then it was funky. Because I think it's got a bit of that kind of traditional... Gary so funk to it. Ricky's got Kofevi and golden syrup. Thank you, Donald. Kofevi. Um, I think it's got a, a slight dunnagey smell to it too, and and that's the sherry cask influence on the in, in the dram itself. And then I think you start getting a bit of, of the the brandy cask influence too. I yeah, think so we, like perfume or even like an aftershave or something. A perfume and aftershave. I, I, I guess you could get that kind of that oud aspect to it as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good shout, John. I like that. I, I like that thought on it. Yeah, it's that. Um, that's what it's like. It's not the same aftershave you got for the boys in uh, Algeria. That's for sure. <laughs> no, it certainly is not. You can you can tell that one everybody afterwards what you called it. Yeah. No. But, do Donald, has, Donald has said that what this it smells like brute aftershave. The, the green bottle, the green plastic bottle. My old man had one of them. Bottom and thin at the top, classic, absolute classic. Mm. Mm. I, I, I get, I start to get now on this one as I as I keep going in the nose, keep going back to it. It starts to build up that there's a leathery smell to it as well. I, I get dark chocolate in it, which is handy because we're pairing it with a dark chocolate. I get a floral note to it as well, but a, a leafy floral note. Uh, almost a slightly turning leafy note. And then uh, the, the kind of specific tasting note I get with this is um if you could if you could imagine like a big thick big fat golden sultana, um California golden sultana. Just the one. And a bit of honey. Now a few of the boys have had that when we did a tasting a few years ago. Um, at Glenfiddich Distillery, we had golden sultanas with honey, and it was mind blowing. Couldn't have, couldn't, it's difficult to replicate that, but that, that's the kind of nose I get in this one. So, um, it does. It smells just like to jump in in the chat there, reasons. reminds me of a shoe shop, bit of leather and rubber that came from that. Yeah, again, leather definitely get that bit of funk. Ron smells like long time soaked in alcohol raisins. Boom. Um, ah, that's exactly. Bites the back of your nose. Jeff compost, yeah, that, that's my kind of, that leafy, that almost turning leaf thing. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, nose similar to the bun I have in 12-year-old from Robin and Nath uh, on one of your previous tastings in our tubes. Yeah, there you go. Good, good shout back to the bun I have in. Okay, let, let's get in with this one. Now, sherry cask finished in a brandy cask, so it's, it's got a really interesting nose. And let's see what the flavour profile is. So, Slange, cheers, everyone. Getting about this. I don't know what to say about it. Oh, I think that's lovely. Ooh. It's like so have that first sip. Go back in for a <laughs> sip. Let, let, let that kind of first sip. Um, it was like nothing happened, finish. and then all of a sudden it kind of it's punched obvious. you right at the back and, of the throat. And then go back in for a second one. Nothing. And there you go. Der Derek's poop smells like a shipyard full of welding. <laughs> He's too, too much time spent with MIG torches there, I think, Derek. Um, yeah, with TIG torches. I, I really... Get the so I Which think one? you get... The, my kind of first hit on this is tannic. I get the white wine. I get that brandy influence, those fermented grapes. I get that in here. Um, what's, what's everybody else getting on this one? Let's hear from everybody else. I got that raisiny type, um, the, the whole brandy influence first, and then you kind of go past that and into kind of um, honeyish and into the rubber. I'm just finding the chocolate. Keeps going and going and going. Yeah. 
it's this is a I, I I think this is a really interesting whiskey and and it has so many of these different unusual flavor points again again go back to that flavor wheel we we have in there those off notes the mm. leathery the sweaty as we called it and the vegetal it's hard work um, these are all different aspects of whiskey and they appear throughout many different types of whiskey um, and I think here you're getting that balance between um, oh, a, a sherry influence to it and the funk that may come with the sherry cask that's been used and the oak that's been used there um, uh, and those those off notes that it's, it's a, just a really interesting dram I think so pairing this dram we have um, the dark chocolate and orange truffle it's lovely so um, it's lovely. everyone have, have a bite of your truffle and let me know what you think of it and, and let's see what we'll get with it I don't think it was very truffly, um, in the sense that it was more liquidy than a truffle. Mm. Look at him, look how che look, he's chewy, you see, it's chewy, it's not chewy, but it's... It tastes like caramelised orange. Right, orange bit. Mm. I like that. What's everybody think of that chocolate? Shout out, what do you think? I thought it was absolutely lovely. It was it was it was quite chewy, but not chewy. It was it was liquidy, but um, but not truffly. If why you expect a truffle to be, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it wasn't a truffle. Yeah, but, uh, I think uh, so. Robin and Nate have said lovely combination. Totally agree with that. Um, June has said, Klein leash with less calf sound flints. Yes, yes. So we'll come back to your note there, I, 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 and that's what I was talking about with the characteristics of it. Um, Hundred percent agree with you there. Uh, the if if, it, if everyone can see what June's written, we'll we'll come back to that in a second. Um, just take a look at that. Uh, it's a good combination, I think, the, between the dark chocolate and the clean leash there, the the, the brandy cask finish. Make it kind of makes the whiskey a bit. Softer it brings out more caramel notes, definitely. Um, yeah, nailed it, Mark. I, I think yep. you do get the caramel thing uh, with it. Interestingly, so I'll just kind of run through a few of my notes on there. Ron has said that the chocolate is like eating a dessert rather than a chocolate, so absolutely. Yeah, it's a heavier chocolate. This one, right? That, that, that raspberry truffle we had at the beginning was very light, I felt. Um, this one is much heavier, there's more to it. It's um, cakey, uh, for, for a truffle almost. Palette for me on, on this one, dried fruit, espresso, I get a lot of coffee influence there, ginger and cinnamon as you, as you work it down and kind of figure out what's in that kind of high range of, of the whiskey itself. Um, tannic presence, a little bit hoppy, uh, I felt, and, and then almost a yeasty mash in, in there too. That's what this do around. Yeah. And finish flavorful, more sherry notes, uh, and then a sharpness from the brandy edge with the finish as well. Um, really enjoyed. I, I quite. I, I was going to say I quite like this drum. I really enjoyed this drum because it was challenging, because it was different, and because I had to think about all the different things that I got from it. Uh, the, the the notes from the distill from North Star on this now North Star are are pretty good. We're coming up with something a bit unusual in their notes. So they have. Super posh, cloudy apple juice and grilled grapefruit on the nose. And in the palate is a fistful of almonds, creamy coffee, which I get, and the dark chocolate, I get that as well. And I think that's why, for me, it pairs quite well with the dark chocolate. Interestingly, this one, if you add a little drop of water to it um, on the nose, what Mark said there, that caramel influence, I think you get a lot more caramel influence on it, um, more coffee on the nose as well, and a little bit more spice pulling in sherry cask influence um i i put for my palate on this one just yes i thought it was an excellent taste to it as well the water complemented and allowed some different flavors to come through um i, I clearly had had enough of writing notes at that point um however it did influence the finish and made the finish a lot shorter um still had the same flavor so what, what's everybody else getting from that what does everybody think of the the combination between the the, the, the whiskey and the whiskey itself, and, and the chocolate, the dark orange chocolate from <clears throat> Cocos. Um, June did mention there, just before we get into, into that last bit, um, he said, June has said, I personally prefer uh, a, a clean leash with less cask influence. I feel it hides the waxiness and minerals a little. 
And that is the characteristic of Klein Leash that should come through in everything, is that waxiness. What's waxiness if you haven't tasted a Klein Leash like it? It's almost the mouthfeel at the back end and, and the finish. It, it, it should it should coat your mouth in a particular way, and, and it's really a strong characteristic of a Klein Leash whiskey. Um, I totally agree with you, and this one does actually hide that. Mm. Um but it's very interesting. I still think it's a really nice tram, but it does mask slightly. That that, and I think for me that comes down to it's a sherry cask. It's been finished in a brandy cask. Um, it, it's very interesting. I think it's unusual, very unusual. But for me, really nice tram though. Um, Ricky said interesting dram. Lot going on. Totally agree with that. And. Very short finish with a couple of drops of water from Jeff. Yeah, I think it took a, totally took away from the finish when you added water. I think it made the, the, the nose very nice, and I think it made the, the taste and the palate very nice. But I do think it it, it, it detracted from the finish, which is which a very important part of what we're, what we're doing. Uh, and then Juno said, definitely agree that it's very interesting. Yeah, I think as, 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 a, as, a, as an example of a clean leash, I think it's very different. It was nice. I still think the first one was the best one. He found it strong, but a lot better with a few drops of water. So yeah, I think I'd encourage everyone to try try it with a few drops of water. I think where you, where you have a cast strength whiskey and you've taken it along the journey that you can, or at the, the, it's um, it's bottled uh, ABV, and you feel you want to try try it a little bit differently. The water does change things. It does open up new things for you to get to. So I'm just gonna have a last bit of this truffle. We find that one much better. Oh, we find it much better after eating the truffle. <laughs> mm. Mm. So why why was that, Ruth? Probably uh, the truffle. Because it was without it. <laughs> I was going to say, because the truffle masked the appalling taste of the whiskey. <laughs> I don't know, Paul, what did you? I just wasn't getting much. I wasn't getting much before. It was just a bit, you wouldn't have thought it was a 20-year-old um, cherry cask before um but when you with the chocolate definite kind of chocolate and caramel come out afterwards do you have any idea how long it's spent in each no but I, I don't have that information now but unfortunately for, for for reasons only known to myself i threw out um when phil returned his bottles to me i threw them out barry didn't return his bottles so i, I don't know any of the flavor profile or, or the kind of the official notes on these ones in terms of Again, couldn't tell you whether that's cast um, unchilled filtered or has any caramel added to it. My thought is it hasn't had caramel added to it, and North Star tend to be um, an integrity bottler, if, if you'll pardon the Ralphie parlance, um, and, and not add uh, a lot of colouring or, or or use chill filtration in, in their whiskey making process. So I'd, I think that one's probably unchilled filtered, no colour added. I don't have the details, Ricky, on in terms of how long it's spent initially in that uh, sherry cask, and then what type of sherry cask it's spent time in, and then what it's spent, it's uh, how long it's spent in the French um, brandy cask. I've not tasted many uh, brandy cask finishes before. It's interesting. I wonder if they sort of tasted it, the cask management guys, as it was going along, thought that it was picking up some of these notes, and then decided to hit it with something, you know, like the brandy to to take it in a di different direction, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I think that's, I think we've I made that comment on, on previous tastings. I think when you've got a, when you have a cask finish, um, it, for me, a cask finish means that the, the dram itself, the original dram coming out, or the original liquid coming out of the first cask it's been in, hasn't really developed the way they want it to, or it's developed in a different way and they want to change that flavour profile that's in it. So they'll take it and they'll file it in, they'll fire it into a sherry cask, many different types of sherry cask, or a, a brandy cask, a red wine cask, and, and try and influence that flavour to where they think there's a sales point in the market. Now, as much as we think that, that whiskey makers are saying, right, this, this, is a, <coughs> this is a great example of whiskey, um, and our, the liquid that comes out of our distillery, they're actually doing it to get sales, of course. So they'll they'll put out what they think is going to kind of turn the market. And in the case of North Star in this one, it's a clean leash, which which which, which targets a particular collector market um, and, a, and, a, and a, a market of people who are interested in clean leashes. And as June has said, that um, the waxiness, that that kind of that flavour characteristics that they they traditionally get with a clean leash, um, 
isn't there in this one. So it's it's a little bit unusual. I would say that most bottles of this won't get opened. It'll sit in a cupboard, it'll sit in a box, in a collection, accruing value over time. That one, I think... I'll probably have it finished within two weeks. Or £127.50 from Time Drum. No, wouldn't I, actually. Go for it. Uh, for me, really interesting whiskey. I think you have to try all sorts of whiskey, as we're doing tonight. Um, but when you're trying to build your kind of background, your experience of whiskey tasting, I think when you try something like this, which has those... I, I, I would say challenging nose and a challenging taste profile. Um, that lets you appreciate those ones where it's more straightforward. Like if you went back to your Scapa just now, which is a first full bourbon cask, you're really going to get the bourbon influence there. You're going to get the vanilla much easier. Now that you've had something that's quite a challenging drama, has got those unusual flavor profiles, those different kind of tasting notes mm. to it in itself. So, of you do. Mm. okay. Klein Leash or Lynch Isle, as North Star have called it from the Highlands, the whiskey region in Scotland. 20 year old, 53, bottled at 53.3%, 125 pounds, 127 pounds 50, I think as it was there. Um, uh, a bottle, sherry cask, finished in a French brandy cask, um, and paired tonight with a dark chocolate orange truffle. Brilliant. Let's get the polling up for this one. I'm uh, going to vote to this. Few of the websites and actually, there is actually very little tasting notes and information through all of them on, on any of the sites on you know length of time in the casks or uh, length of time in the finish. Huh. I'm going to give that one. Um, quite a, a varied <sighs> on this one. Uh, just as we go through that, four, five, five point six, uh, six out of ten. Let's go for it. Uh, Donald said water made it worse for me. That's no problem. I think that's that's why we try it with different things so we know what we'll, what we do like. Um, Matt has said he found that the pre chocolate it was reminiscent of Irish coffee, but not so sweet. Mm. The dark chocolate masked the bitter uh, and released more sweetness. Definitely creamy throughout, though. Yeah, and and I think that's whether whether you're having it with um, uh, chocolate or whether you're having it with cheese. The food that mm, you have geez, it with you will um, influence the, how you taste it. So ah, there you go. I got it right. Six out of ten. To start with, with the food that you're going to have it and adding a little bit of water so you get that wide range of things. There's the poll results for this one. Uh, the third whiskey, um, we've had the Glenallachie, the Scapa, and that was the, the Klein Leash. Um, six out of ten for that one. Probably not surprised by that. I, I, I think it is a challenging whiskey. I did say it was very interesting. Um, uh, and challenging, yeah, funky, a little bit different. Um, six out of ten, some sevens, some eights, and a couple of nines, four nines at the back end there. So, really, I, mm. for me personally, I, I think I'd probably have scored that between a seven and an eight. Really nice. Ricky has said, not sure if I've tasted any whiskies that have sherry base and then finished in something else. Usually bourbon and all. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. Fair shout. You will find that in order to allow a finish to add something to it, it'll have to come from a lighter drink, a lighter liquid or a lighter cask into something heavier to allow that shorter maturation time to influence it. So I think, I think that's a good shout, Baraki. So that's our first three drams of the night gone. We've got two more to go. We've got the Kilkerran and the Bowmore. Um, we'll take a short five minute break from you now. So we'll come back at quarter past nine. So it's a six minute break. Um, I'll mute everyone just now. Unmute yourself if you want to chat and, and discuss the whiskeys and stuff. But we'll see you back here at 15 minutes past nine. Quarter past we're five minutes, right? Here we go. So five minutes. Um, I've stopped my video on there and I'll just keep on going in here. Um, yes, so that was that's three whiskeys down. The, the 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 first one was all right, actually. Um, I preferred that one, which was the 90, 90 quid one. Glenarchy Premier Cruise Class. Whiskey. So, aye. Um, on that, it's been a it's been a fairly decent night. The chocolates, give or take. I'd rather have a sausage roll, to be honest, than a bit of um, you know, a volivon, like a, a what do you call it, like a chicken volivon, or um, a sausage roll, or something like uh, a cheese, cheese and crackers. Rather than that, actually having like chocolates. Chocolates, it's not really my thing, but you know, if you're giving them, they're actually all right. Let's see what's happening here. Is everything in the chat pages? Have a look on just lines. Um, Kev Mitchell joined in. A couple of questions. He got uh, 
He's saying that he got uh, Scapper for Christmas. Um, but Kev now watching Wonder Woman 84. So he's he's obviously watching something better than, than us. Mm. My uh, my throat sounded a bit... That's just purely from the first whiskey. I just felt that, that burn coming back. Uh, let's see who else is there. So the, the Wizard Club has been running for a, for a, a while, a good few years actually, um, but obviously this year is when they, they started off um, pushing out through doing Zoom meetings and it's it's, it's a good it's a good uh, experience. Um, this is the first one I've, I've been to where they've paired it with chocolate. Um, most of them have just been whiskies and there's mostly times they've got themes. The last theme was whiskies under £35, which was quite nice, so very very affordable whiskies, but what also it does is gives you the chance to try whiskies that you've probably never, you've never tried, or would never be able to afford to try. Like for example, with the whiskies here, I, I, I probably wouldn't buy a ninety pound whiskey, but you get the chance to try it, and then you're thinking, hmm, maybe, maybe I could just splash, splash out and get myself a bottle. But that's the that's them. Um, we had a couple of people in. We had uh, Paul from South Devon watching in. Um, drinking a Coors Light. That, listen, that's exactly the point. It's just joining in is the important thing. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, Kev Mitchell and Paul. So uh, there you go. Um, we've got two more whiskies left. One's a 16-year-old and the last one is a 23-year-old Bowmore. So that one, I'm looking to show the cut. If I look at the cut of that one, it's the last one. Really dark, so it probably, I don't know, sherry cask maybe. Um, but we'll find out, we'll find out in a bit. Oh, He's back. Ah, oh, all right. What's up? Do you think of the drums tonight then? And the chocolates? Good, Ben. Good. Where are the yeah. chocolates? Is there is there a link for where you can buy the chocolates? <laughs> yes, Ruth. Uh, it's in the emails that's come out. Uh, okay. right. Coco Ooze is is the name of the company that we've we've sourced the chocolates from. So. It's it's a local company in Aberdeen. They used to have a shop in town. They've kind of moved out of that and moved into a kind of. Um, uh, an industrial area just outside of, or just in part of Aberdeen and, and that's where the, 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 the chocolates are from cocoa ooze um, we've, 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 we have put it in the, the various emails and stuff there is, there is in the, the kind of like, tasting packs as well there'll be some notes on, on the, the chocolates and where they're from as well they're completely sold out after Christmas Ruth we've already checked <laughs> well Ron when they come back in stock, just order double. We'll uh, sort it out after. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not already checked. <laughs> it's a strange one. I've heard it bears really bad reviews about cocoa but tonight it's been really, really good. I'm quite mm. enjoyed it. That's good to hear. No, uh, the ones here are lovely. I, I think they've paired they've paired up. Did you like any um like like any chocolate shop, they're, they're, they they do some unusual flavours. Um, I like that Klein Leach challenging flavours, um, where they are kind of pushing the boundaries a wee bit. Um, I think the what we've got tonight is is a fairly solid range of chocolates. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, there's no, there's no kind of like pistachio and black pepper or anything like that. It's Fairly solid chocolates, hard, hard to go wrong. And I think they match up well with the whiskies and that. So I think uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there is, you know, folks saying that they're, they're a wee bit unusual or, or some, some of the whiskey, mm. some of the chocolates they've had haven't been great there. Um, I think that happens to every place. But um, we certainly, in my experience, I, I've enjoyed everything I've got from Cocos. And they, they do good tasting sets or um, kind of like build your own lolly sets and that um, for children, which are really popular as well. The thing is, if you want some and, uh, good I think food... The salted, the salted caramel combination with the, the island whiskey is a great combination, Joe. I mean, it really is complimentary. No, I, I, th I think I think that's a it's a it's a good shout. It's, it's it's unfortunate, Jeff, that with the Bowmore we couldn't get a smoked cheese um, chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, I, I know. I've I've got up there. So one of the oh, 
I'm assuming we the Bone Wars are in the club a, a right that. smoky we one. We told each other what whiskey we wanted um, for Christmas. So I got him, uh, the, so I think somebody mentioned there, uh, the um, cask strength batch four from Glenallachie. And I, I got the Arbeg Corey Vrecken, um, and it's just phenomenal, Jeff. Oh, so good. Brilliant. Love nice it. one. I got, I got a bow more dark, uh, darkness, not darkest, but darkness. Huh. But if you tried that before, that's a fantastic draw as well. Ah, wow. we'll have a look at that one. All right. Did so, anyone ever manage to get one of the Art Bag 17? Uh, I know um, Joe Shepard, who's one of the, uh, the boys in the club, he's not on the chat tonight, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> got a bit under the weather, but he, I think, probably got that. He he's on the, he does the committee staff and all the releases there. Um, I think he got the, the 17 as well. So that, that's that's the new one, isn't it? No. No, it hasn't been available for about 10 years. Oh. It was an absolute favourite. Ah, okay. um, and then it was um, there was a mistake, and it was it was withdrawn. <laughs> I know there was there wasn't one... any more of it. Shall we I say? There, I know there was one that was released recently that was very popular, um, as as all our big releases are. So, um, okay, so uh, I think that's mm. everybody back now, or, or most people back. We'll move on to, to drum number four for the night. So, <clears throat> drum number four is from the Kilcarran Distillery um, in Campbellton on the Campbellton Peninsula. And it's not that far from here. Bourbon cast matured and is only 46%. So this is the lightest one of the night in terms of the ABV. It's only 46%. It's paired chocolate-wise with milk chocolate honeycomb disc. So you should have a disc left and then the dark chocolate hazelnut. So this one goes with the, 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 um, the, the chocolate honeycomb disc. Gee whiz. Kilcairn. New, is it a new distillery? No, it's not a new distillery, but it's one that started releasing whiskey very recently. Um, it started back up at Springbank Distillery in Campbellton uh, using the Glengyle facilities that's right next door and adjacent to that. They've released some spectacular whiskey, I would say, over the last few years. Uh, absolutely one of my favourite distilleries. The 16-year-old that we've got tonight, when it was originally released, was £46 a bottle. The last time I saw it available, it was £100 a bottle, and that was in Europe, in a, a, a Belgian whiskey shop that I follow uh, on Instagram, as you, as you do. Um, that's the last time I've seen this one available. It's supposed to be part of their core range, but when it comes out, it goes quickly. Um, and there's a reason for that, and I, I hope we'll all feel this way as, as we go through this the, the tasting of this fourth dram, um, the Kilcarran 16-year-old. So let's get into this one. No, no chill filtration, uh, unchill filtered, uh, no colour added in that one as well. Beautiful so, golden colour. The colour, I look at this colour there. 46%. Um, for, for me, 46, 48 is, is the point at which you, and I think for most people, is the point at which you really start to get much more flavour out of your whisky. Nothing wrong with 40% whisky, but you're just not going to get a huge amount of flavour on it. If you tasted this Kilcarran at 40% versus this Kilcarran at 46%, it's, not, it's a night mm. and day comparison. And and as you add that alcohol to it, the alcohol contains and helps pull through a huge amount of that, um, the flavours and the sensations that you're going to get from the whiskey. So this one, 16-year-old from Campbellton, Campbellton, sorry. Um, bourbon cast matured, hence the colour, and hence some of the... That's a joke or something. Well. So let, let's go in with the nose. Um, please feel free to to, to fire on um, <laughs> your tasting or, or your notes into the chat. The chat's going it's quite, great. It's quite medicinal. Put it on there or, or shout them out. Okay. So what's everybody getting on the nose on this one? Pears for me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Orchard fruit, apples, pears. I, I I've got on this one that it's a yes nose for me. Spot on, just phew, lovely. Tony's got a bit of herbal in there. Yep, th this this one I've I've got that on my the, the palate for me starts to get a bit more herbs, but yeah, herbs is a is a is a kind of common enough one with the sages. What I've put in my notes actually. Um, 
maybe starting to get a wee bit of maybe peat in the background there. Just a wee bit, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think is a very, very, very fine. This one. Very yeah, fine. Totally. Yeah, a wee bit of peat, maybe a little touch of smoke. Yeah, I, I, I said that. As a, as a peat and whiskey drinker, I don't forget a huge amount of peat out of this one. I, I think I put. In fact, I don't have peat in my notes. That's how. That's how. There's definitely it. peat in there. There's definitely peat in there. There's a bit tiny. Of t- yeah, there's a, there's a tiny bit. Tiny bit of peat, bit of smoke. And, and it's it's not Lagavulin peat, but no, no. peat in yeah. there. So I, I, I think if there's any peat, it's in that smoky side of things rather than I think, I think if you're looking at the flavour wheel, if you printed one out, um, we, we've got kind of in four categories. And, and our flavour wheel is no different from pretty much anybody else's flavour wheel. It's all very much of a muchness. Um, medicinal, smoky, maritime and earthy is the, is the four types of peat classification. We've got. And for me, if this has got anything, it's got that. <laughs> If there's anything in it, it's the, the kind of smoky maritime side. Uh, June's yeah, just said there, um, okay. some hints of coastal saltiness, yep. And Derek, uh, it smells smoky, yep. So okay. folk are definitely getting smoke. So I, I, I get in this bubble gum. <coughs> I, th- I think yeah, bubble gum for me. A bubble gum, and it's, it's got that, I've, I've actually got to check my notes there, herbal edge, tropical, sweet, Fresh cut grass. Yep. No, I totally get that as well, John. It's a good shout. Have you got a grass? <laughs> Ever when the gardener's done it? <laughs> the gardener's done it, John. Call the chainsaw to do the grass just now. Hey. So, uh, lemon I, meringue pie. Really? That that's I've the lemon meringue pie like that before. That's the official notes. That's not me. Uh, 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 you know, <laughs> it's definitely. It's in this. If you go to the Kilcarran, or I think it's Royal Mile whiskies have a huge flavour section for the Kilcarran, and I kind of took extracts of that. Um, but it's got paragraphs of, of what they get in terms of the nose on this one, and there's a lot of videos about about tasting the Kilcarran. So for me, lo- lovely nose on this one. Really enjoy it. Um, let's get in with the taste slange, everyone. Cheers. Oh. I started ages ago. There you go, slange. Hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Nice and salty. Yep. Mm. It's definitely got a salty edge to it. Um, Reminds me of being beside the sea. Definitely. Mm. I don't think cut grass as well. It, yeah, I think you're starting to get a bit more of the sagey, herby side of things on this. And and, and my I fresh sage is my kind of herbal kind of touchstone on it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> June has said, tastes like a watered down heavily peated that I tried earlier this year. Okay. Ricky said, definitely hot, salty on it. Um, so I've got... our, 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 our ex Navy is telling me here that um, it's like when you're standing at the side of the boat and the spray's coming up. <laughs> There you go. Is that the taste of the sea salt when you're miles out in the middle of the nowhere. You get the diesel from the engine. Yeah. The salt as well. Um, I get a bit of woodiness to this one as well. Um, a little bit of polish note on the taste as well. Um, citrusy polish. Paired, of course, um, jumping back to that, with the, the chocolate honeycomb. So the crunchy, effectively. So let's have a bite of that, see how we got on with it, and see what the, the whiskey tastes like after it. There's honey and honeycomb. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Now that's nice. I like that. I'm, I'm a big crunchy... Chocolate mm. honeycomb fan, and that, that's a lovely one, that one. Smooth, smooth chocolate again, smooth milk chocolate. Let's see how it changes the, uh, the taste, just before jumping in there. Ricky said a slightly aniseedy smell. Yeah, you get, you'll get you get that from it. Um, Ross, peppery, almost a ginger snap biscuit, really nice, yeah. Jeff has said cork, okay. Um, and Matt said, pretty and sweet for me with a coastal zing. Definitely some citrus in there. Yeah. Looking for the cork now, isn't it? 
So what did everybody make of that? Taste the chocolate. What did everybody make of the chocolate? It's lovely. You can't go wrong. Excellent. Chocolate honeycombs. Just, I, I would have to say I really enjoy Mackie's chocolate honeycomb. Apologies, Jamie, if you're watching, but Mackie's chocolate honeycomb is delicious. Isn't it? <laughs> Get that in bars. Not public. Bars. Yes, I know that I know that the chocolate was meant to enhance the whiskey, but all of the chocolates have made the whiskies taste better, which which annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> then, then the experiment has been a success. Well, it has, yeah. Um, not so sure about the Klein Leash one, like, but. Matt, we've got a couple of that one. Robin and Nate have said it enhances the caramel. I, I, I would get that as well. Um, yeah. It's a very salty affair, this one, isn't it? I, I think, I think the, the, the for me, taste profile on this one builds over time. The more the more you have the sips of this. So this is a 16-year-old from a, a very small distillery. The batch runs aren't massive. Um, it's nice. Such a good jam. They are... Eight-year-old, heavily peated sherry cast dram was, was one of my favourite drams of last year. Um, uh, incredible value for forty quid a bottle. This one forty-six pounds when it came out. Um, now I would doubt you can get it anymore. Uh, it was available for a hundred quid, as I said, uh, per bottle on a, some random Belgian whiskey shop. Um, but I don't know if you can get it anymore. Oh. We think that the chocolate didn't actually improve this one. No. The reverse effect. Mm. It was nicer when it was more salty and sea yeah. air than lost sweetening it up. Yeah, I've lost. I agree. That's, that's interesting. There's a couple of other people who put that in the feedback that um, Ron and Derek have both said chocolate is nice, but it pairs with the stram. It, uh, don't think it pairs with the stram. We mm. think the chocolate was too sweet for the whiskey. That's really interesting feedback. It's good, though. It'd be interesting to try the salted chocolate with this one. Uh, yeah, if we hadn't, met, hadn't eaten all of the salted caramel one earlier on, mm. that might have been nice with that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm staring at a, 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 a tray that I put the chocolates in that's, that has one chocolate left in it now. <laughs> I didn't keep any of them for, for kind of cross-reference. Uh, Robin and Nate have also said... Um, we also oft we often try whiskey with fruit cake or Christmas cake this week. Um, thanks, to Alex, for that tip. Yeah, uh, and that's my Christmas cake had two hundred and fifty mils of whiskey in it. One hundred and fifty when I was making it, and then various more over the the, the course of the, the last month and a bit when I was making it. Um, tasted bloody good, if you ask me. Um, okay, so. That was Kilkerran from Campbelltown, 16-year-old, 46%. Um, bourbon cast mature. We'll, we'll quickly throw up the poll for that one. I'm going to give that two seconds. I'm going to give that eight. I think eight or ten. And we'll see what you get the score on that. Seven. Eight or ten for me. That was a decent one. People wanted to add water on this. My, my notes from the water, um, when I added water during my tasting, uh, my, my sampling session was... It gives it almost a damp smell. Uh, well, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy the smell particularly. Um, it gave it a longer finish, but it didn't really influence or improve the, the, the palate on it much um, from my perspective. Okay, so it's 30 of 33 voted so far. I'll do this then. Da -da 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 -da. And I'll share the results for there. So the Kilkerran, 16-year-old, paired with the milk chocolate and honeycomb, uh, got an, an average score or the most popular mm. score of 8 out of 10 yep. and then 7 sixes, one five, two ten 1 5 2 10 out of 10s uh, and then some 9 mm. out of 10s as well for me if, if 46 pounds a bottle for a 16 year old um, whiskey I think is uh, phenomenal value if you can get your hands on something like this when it comes out, and, and there will be more releases, this is supposed to be part of Kilkerran's core range. Um, so if you can get it, if you see it coming out, or, or we'll we'll try and post stuff on our page. If you follow the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop, they often post when they've got whiskies coming out. So if you see it, you want to buy this thing, and you want to get in, in it kind of the ground floor on it. So, right, we'll move on now. Tony said, Highland Park 12, the blue cheese, a great pairing. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I think cheese and whiskey is an, an excellent combination as well. There's a lot of distilleries do um, whiskey <coughs> as well as whiskey and chocolate. So 
We'll move now. So, yeah, that was £46 a bottle. We'll move on to the last dram of tonight, or the last dram of the tasting, I should say. I don't think it'll be the last dram of tonight. And that's the Bowmore. So this is from the Carnmore Celebration of the Cask Series. This is a 23-year-old Bowmore from Isla. 53.4%, so back up into that cask strength range. Um, it's from a PX Sherry Cask, so it's a Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cask. Um, so it spent its entire life in that one cask. Uh, it's paired today with a dark chocolate and hazelnut truffle. Ooh. Um, a bottle of... Now you're speaking. Find it. Retailed at 266 quid. Um, so oh. The most expensive bottle we've ever had in more tastings <clears> and the most ex- obviously the most expensive bottle tonight. So... Um, Delicious dram, this one. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it when I was doing my taste. The notes got a huge amount out of it. So we'll, we'll dive in with the, the nose just now. So if anyone wants to jump in with any, any of the kind of the, 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 the notes for the nose, uh, please just shout them out or, or put them in the chat. Definitely get the sherry notes there. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it smells like a sherry cask dram. Of course. Very much so. Um, darkest of, of, of the lot tonight. Again, um, I don't know whether it's unchill filter. I know there's been no colour added to it. Um, I, I would doubt... I didn't give you the bottles back, Joe. It is, Barry, sadly. Um, but the, on, on this one, um, I, I doubt there's been any, uh, any chill filtration. It's not part of... Um, um, Morrison uh, Sandy, if you forgot you saying that uh, there's some heavy hitting Morrison. drums here, no, Sandy, you're near, you're near wrong there. There wasn't any dregs really left in the bottle, Joe. Never any dregs left in the bottle, Barry. So, this, this is a 23 year old, so quite a bit of time spent in the cast for it, and that, that's one of the reasons why uh, the, 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 a bottle of this would cost you £266. 53.4%, so a, a high alcohol volume. Um, alcohol by volume will mean you'll get reduced uh, um, amount of bottles from the cask. If you, if you are watering it down, you'd obviously increase the volume of liquid and you'd get more bottles from it. So, um, nose notes, what's everybody getting on this one? Right. Christmas cake. Oh. Christmas cake, we've got um, new Eagle. Bo- Eagle top. Witch hazel, fruity. Witch hazel, yes. I'm getting some smoke in there as well. Woody, yeah. Woody and okay. Fruity. <laughs> Woody and Fruity, yeah. I, I get, on this one, um, you get light, for me, it's fragrant peat notes on this, so this smells like peat rather than any other type of smoke. Um, I also get leather and uh, sweet fruit. So I think it's very well balanced between the sweetness and, and the smoke on it. Um, and tobacco. <laughs> Again, I get yeah, tobacco is a good shout. I think if if you if you smell this through, Donald gets burnt leather from it. And I get I definitely get the leather side of things. Um tobacco is is definitely in there as well. The more you the nose it, the more you should be picking up in the different aspects of, of the that, that whiskey. And this is a twenty three year old whiskey. He's spent a huge amount of time. That that for someone to allow a whiskey to spend or, or put the the investment in allowing a whiskey and a liquid to spend that amount of time in a cask. It does actually smell absolutely stunning. It yeah, does, it's great. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in agreement with uh, Bruce and Rick. Wait till you taste it. Robin and Nath. Nath says super glue. I disown him. I, I agree. Kick him, kick him out I'm of the house. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of tempted to put it back in the bottle and keep it for like. No, it's all right. I'll just drink it now. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think this one tastes smells better than it tastes. <coughs> oh, <laughs> see, it does it. Too clue in a good way if it makes a difference. Barry. In uh, a good Jeff, way. I'm only, I'm only joking. Barry, uh, Jeff has said superb offering. So let's uh, let's get him on. You taste oh. the last one. Let's Steel. dive in. Sponge. Oh, last oh. one of the night. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely. I'm definitely getting like the see. So you mentioned earlier on with that uh, the German smoked cheese, mm-hmm. that would be absolutely perfect with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm getting. Do you know what? If we could have a whiskey and cigar pairing, this would go perfect with a cigar. Absolutely bang on. Uh, absolutely. Just just on this comment there. 
the, the smokiness definitely comes through and we'd, we'd, we'd sit perfectly with that cheese as well. Mm. I, yeah. and as Barry says, this this is the kind of whiskey that's a cigar. Uh, a cigar, mm. but, uh, uh, you know, a Monte Cristo. Uh, a um, Mon- yeah. Real good. Ed, uh, Phil's favourite, Monte Cristo Edmundo. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at Phil, you You'd be delighted with that type of whiskey, a cigar to go along with this. This is absolutely amazing. It balances very well with smoke and fruit, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I mean, I mean, if you were if you were part of a whiskey and cigar sorry. club, this would be the perfect whiskey for a whiskey and cigar club. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This is a cigar malt. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. R- rather than the stuff that you see marketed, I, I can't recall who who's marketing one just now. Tom and Tool, I think it was. Yeah, so there's a there's a few different um, distillers, cigar malts. I won't mention Dalmore, but they do it as well. Um, this is the type of one that matches with a cigar effortlessly. I would say. Yeah, so quickly before we get into the chocolate and my taste and notes on this in terms of what I'm getting from it, um, maritimey mm. smoke. So still that kind of a slight element of salinity in it. Um, I, I, <laughs> I said it's like a fresh country walk after the rain. You, you're getting that dampness, the, gr- the greenery in there as well. Um, then the bonfire smoke comes back in, um, and it, it has it has body. This one, I think the notes is that it's got it's quite oily and heavy, and I, I totally agree with that. I think this one's great. Um, a lovely fleet feeling uh, in, in, in the, on the, the kind of the palate and the tongue there, um, the top of the mouth. Get a bit of tobacco in it too. Um, really pulling through that influence of the, what you could get with a cigar on this as well. Um, and it has spice to it too. So it's an excellent amount of spice, I think. Superbly balanced dram. I think it really t- hits on all kind of flavour profiles on it. Hmm. So good. I'll just quickly go back on on the notes and uh, in the chat. Ricky, lots of savoury dark fruits, definitely. Ron, so many layers we can't describe them. I think I, I'll come there as well. Um, Leighton said, "Don't know about the notes, but it's superb." Yeah, and and smoke, but no peat. Great house. I love for that influences it as well. So this is uh, as with every dram tonight. It's paired with a chocolate, and and this one is a dark chocolate hazelnut truffle. So. Let's go for a bite of that. Um, see how the chocolate tastes. Right, and see how it go. changes if it changes the dram. Bon appetit. Mm. So white stuff on the look, top. Look, look at the inside. That's only you that's got the white stuff, Ricky. Uh oh. Need to change my shampoo. <laughs> that's, mm, that's I like nice. that. I like that chocolate. I don't like the comments that you two boys were having there, but um, I like the chocolate there. That I think the hazelnut's really subtle. It's not an overpowering mm. Ferrero Rocher type of hazelnut, but um, yeah, what's wrong with that Ferrero Rocher? Ab- absolutely nothing, but I don't think it pairs up with a twenty-three-year-old bone or very well. Um, Ferrero has... Rocher goes with everything, Joe. Ah, I wouldn't disagree there. Um, <laughs> June has said, a favourite of the night for me. I think it's a perfect balance of smoke and sherry. 100%. Derek said, a grouse moor after it's been burnt. I'll need to get out grouse, uh, grouse in to see if I can do oh, that. Uh, and Robin and Nath have said, it would be a crime to add water. I didn't add water to this one. I couldn't. Yeah. Just didn't think it, it needed the water. It was just... Mm. Damn near perfect as it was. So, mm. really tasty chocolate. Don't know if anybody's got any comments on the chocolate there. I thought it was the, oh. for me the best chocolate of the night. Chocolate was really nice. Oh, oh sorry, please. No, no, Go sorry. Ahead. I was just going to say that for me that was the best chocolate of the night. Yeah, it, it, it was, but it was the only one that didn't add to. The whiskey, I think the whiskey was amazing on its own, and the chocolate was amazing on its own. Mm. Put together, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a pairing. But what what chocolate are you going to pair with a whiskey that smells and tastes like a good cigar, unless the chocolate tastes like a cigar? Mm. So there's no good chocolate company that are going to like make a cigar tasting chocolate. <laughs> 
There is, I've had chocolate flavoured cigars though. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we have. Yeah. yeah. But did, did Phil know by them? Yeah, we had, a, we had a tasting pack, if you remember, that came with a with, with the different cigars in it. And there was the, the, the miniature, well, sort of medium cigars. And there was a few of them with the chocolate, chocolate essence cigars. But, but a cigar taste in chocolate is probably not the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you'd be better with the the um the robusto um or the window for the for, for was, that. I think it pairs up with it. I think it would pair up with it amazing. Back, back to the back to the whiskey. Obviously when I first smelt it, not being a, a, a peated or smoky fan on when you first smell that, you just think, Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's gonna, you know, be my sort of cup of tea and everything like that. But from a taste point of view and everything like that, that is absolutely stunning. I love that. That's really, really nice. Yeah, dude. Right. Yes. Thoroughly like that. That's lovely. Top, top drums. Is there anyone who doesn't like this whiskey? No, and all... Nobody, nobody's going to own up to that now. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was thinking there, Phil, Donald or Chris would maybe not like that, but... No, that, that's not about... smells rancid, but tastes really fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different kind of, as I say, cigar-type smell, but my God, that taste... A few people have said, excuse me. <laughs> Joe's eating his chocolates. Go on, Joe, just finish your chocolate. <laughs> fill in for me for a minute there, Barry. Um, okay. A few so people uh, said the whiskey didn't need anything uh, and that the, the chocolate didn't add to it. And I, I, I think this is such a good whiskey, it didn't need it didn't need anything to it. Uh, but I, 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 I do think it was a very nice chocolate. The, the chocolate didn't detract from no. the whiskey. It just didn't add anything, whereas the, the chocolates added some element and brought out other elements of the other whiskies. Mm -hmm. The chocolate didn't add to this one because the whiskey was so good on its own. Mm. The only thing that would add to this whiskey is a cigar. But and I a cigar is only enjoyed in company. I agree, I agree. I, I think you've made that point. Um, labelled it possibly, but you've certainly made that point that it would go with a cigar. Um, no, I think the only thing that would add to that whiskey is another one of those whiskeys. <laughs> well, I, I, the whole I bottle, totally agree with that. The whole bottle, you're right, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I and totally the straw. <laughs> if I never so, turn so it back to it, it's just And a straw? Yes, a straw. <laughs> Brilliant. So I think we're safe to that. say the original members of this group when lockdown's over are going to be sitting with five or six chocolate-covered cigars <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a garden with a bottle of this and six six straws. Uh, I, I, I would love to get up my hands on a bottle of this because I did my tasting notes for this in the, in the last couple of nights. I I, I kind of waited back on on doing it. Um, I wish I'd, I noticed this one a long time ago when we first got the bottles. And we, we got the bottles at the beginning, at the back end of November, in order to allow us to bottle everything, to post it out, get it all done in terms of packaging and that. And you managed not to sample it all? Well, most of them. There was barely enough. Our, our normal sample sizes, our normal. <laughs> Um, sizes in the bottles that, that we put out are, are 30 mils. This was all 25 mils tonight because we put it out to more people and because there was just, we couldn't eke it out any further. So everyone got a 25 mil sample rather than our normal and what we'll go back to in January, 30 mil samples. So um, we eked it out as much as we could because we, we, we thought this was a great one to share. Um, we, we, we had the chocolates. It, it, it just became like, it just suited us to do it at that size of, or that mm -hmm. size of a, a, a sample. Um, I wish I'd tasted this one because I think this is one of the ones where you may have bought a bottle of it, even at, yep. even at 266 quid. It's uh, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of whiskey. It's a delicious whiskey. This one, stunning. Yeah, I think it would be worth it. To be fair, just on your point about packaging, proper impressed. The new packaging is absolutely spot on. Must have taken you lot, you guys, a fair amount of time making those boxes, making them pretty and everything else, but they are stunning. They're a really well, good shite. Well done. Well, can, well, can I actually say, to be fair... <laughs> it's the wives. <laughs> Bring the wives as, in. Well, the wives. As much, well, Joe, sorry, just to interrupt, but just as much as the, the Whiskey Club 
is involved in this. Susan designed designed that box, and Susan and Joe put together those boxes and spent hundreds of hours putting those those boxes together and making them look so pretty. And we couldn't even imagine how amazing they were. I didn't actually open mine up today because I wanted the the surprise of opening it up uh, today. It was just fantastic. They did such a massive, fantastic job. So well done, uh, Joe and Susan. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Well done, Susan. Fab. Well done. And just to see, sorry, just to see. Susan said, yes, I don't know if I'm on the main screen. That's Susan sitting uh, there. Um, it's Susan has pulled together. She's designed these boxes. She's, she's, um, like I said, she's motivated the team. She's pushed the team forward. Um, and she's just doing the absolute best she can. So, well done. 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 Ruth, to say it's the new packaging would be slightly misleading. It's the one off <laughs> packaging. Um, it's lovely Christmas packaging, and it's a lovely, it makes it an extra special treat for Christmas. Yeah, and that's, and that's what we hope. That's what we hope this was for everyone. Um, again, whether you're someone who's been along our tastings in the past or this is your first one, um, this was something a bit different, something a bit special. The, the pairings, the whiskies, the whiskies were all, I, I, Personally, I think top notch, and and really individual and different whiskies. Um, that that Bowmore, we'll, we'll do the poll on it just now. Um, that Bowmore was outstanding. Um, worth two hundred and sixty six quid. I yeah. if I could get my hand in a bottle of that, I would spend that money on it. I think Actually, it's that good. Work, and yeah. give it to Susan if she doesn't. <laughs> and give it to Susan because Susan doesn't drink alcohol, and therefore I would get to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> The we'll, best type of present. We'll, we'll throw up the poll for that one at, uh, and, and we'll see what everybody thought of the, the fifth whiskey of the night. The, Just to say, I'm going to give that a 10 because it was, it, it was stunning. From Carl Moore. Um, Is it available? Uh, I don't think so, Mark. I, I think that one's sold out, but it's worth checking. Um, mm. It really is a, a, a top drum. Um, I, I haven't, uh, haven't tasted it there just now. I wish I'd tasted it a long time ago. Master uh, of Malt's got it. Oh. 258.96 oh. on Master of Malt. Bargain. Right, it's a race to see who can buy one then. <laughs> I wish you didn't tell me that. All right. Phil, Phil, Barry, Barry. Joe's, Joe's a bit stuck at the minute. He can't get off and buy, so if you're buying one, make sure you put a two in that box, in that basket. <laughs> um, I will um, wait to say, Phil, if, you, if there's one there, buy it and the club will buy the bottle. <laughs> Do it. Well, no the thing is, Phil will buy two, one for the club and one for himself. Ah, there you go. It's what. You, the oh, thing is, what oh, you, look at what that. You may not have noticed with Phil tonight is that to, to his left hand side there was a there was there was somebody else there. So Tracy will be keeping an eye on what he's doing just now. He's in her yes. bed now. Ah, it's just oh, no, no, it's a disaster. Phil's just blown his, his 26, 2021 budget. Uh, so this, this, this has still been live streamed, Phil, just to let you know. <laughs> it's recorded, mate. Trace will be watching it in her bed. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's the scoring results for that one. 24 people scored at least a 9 out of 10, 12 a 10 out of 10. I, I think up to this point this year, the, the Bell Dornier that we had during the Space Side um, premium was probably my favourite drama of the year. I think this one's probably just overtaken it. It's just pipped it there. Just mix it in the bud, yeah. Yeah, and I've, I've got a bottle of the Bell Dornier. I bought a bottle of that, but I think if, if we can get it as a, a club bottle fill, that would be good. And hopefully you've beat everybody else. Right, tonight. okay. Who just bought it then? Oh, oh. <laughs> Is, it, is, it, is that a out, out of stock? There was one in stock and it's just gone sold out. <laughs> Who bought it? Well, <laughs> Who bought it? It's uh, somebody on here. So, well, uh, Bruce is looking loser. a bit guilty. He was the one who spotted it. Oh, no. Uh, we'll just go through some of the comments there as, as, as the guilty party leaves the chat. Um, <laughs> Le Leighton gave, says, ask him, have an 11 out of 10 for that one. Matt has said, a lot of talk of the whiskey and cigar patching, but Carl Moore have definitely up in their game too. I would agree with that. This is a much, the, the, a classier bottling of the celebration of the cask. I think it looks really nice. Um, I have, you probably can't see it, but up here somewhere there's a, a Glenburgie 
Phil will laugh. A uh, Glenn Burgie from Carl Moore's uh, Casa Distinction series. I really like that. Um, Matt, yeah, latest run is beautiful. Derek, it would hold up in an old fashioned. I think it would overtake an old fashioned. Donald, best yet by far. Barry Gibson, I want a cigar. Yeah. Make a great Christmas present to myself, Donald. I hope it's. That's good. not what I said. <laughs> I, I, I'll slightly paraphrase it. The, 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 this, this, word, this word, just because just I can, this word appeared. That, that word appeared. Um, I, I've disabled the sound just now so because for Phil's benefit I've disabled all my sound effects and that um, so Quite right. we'll do one more poll no, one more poll for tonight which is on, on the pairing so what was the best pairing of tonight between whiskies? started off dram number one the Glenallan yeah. Premier Crew Clask and the Raspberry Truffle uh, Scarpa was next just for that one I voted the second last one because I thought the, the chocolate was nicest that chocolate and orange it kind of uh, worked better was the oh no drum, shit I was doing it wrong with the milk chocolate honeycomb disc and then last of all was the Bowmore where it matched up with the dark chocolate hazelnut. So this is the pairing, not the whiskey, but the pairing. So what was the best combination between the whiskey and the chocolate itself? So let us know. Let we'll, uh, go for a few seconds more. Just, just to say, just to say, I um, I, I got the box. I got the two boxes too, one for myself and one for a friend who, um, unfortunately can't be with us tonight. But I'm going to make him watch the YouTube video so he can join along live. Um, but, but the one I opened up initially. Was, I was going to do a video of the unboxing, and that was fine. But the second one, which I was going to give to him, um, the dog chewed it. So that, that's what we ended up with. <laughs> so Bruce, what I think you'll find is the, jo the dog chewed it, opened it up, took out the bow mower, repackaged it, and then left it for your pal. So If I'd known. <laughs> if I'd only known. So, right, the last poll of the night, you'll be delighted to know, although we were going to have a poll about which poll was your favourite poll. Um... <laughs> The one, the one from Krakow. Sharing the poll results. So, there you go. Oh, okay. Glenallachy and Raspberry Truffle was the best combo of the night, yeah. followed up by the scat and salted caramel. Yeah. I would have loved to have tried the salted caramel yeah. with yeah. Karen. Yeah. We did that, the dark chocolate hazelnut, but the dark chocolate hazelnut was nice anyway. So, How much how much do you think that that, though, is related to third, fourth whiskey? Because I doubt many of us are cleaning our palates between goes. And how much of it is genuinely chocolate whiskey connection? That's a question I can't answer, Ruth, quite honestly. <laughs> no, I know we can't. But... Um, I, I think it's, again, it's just whatever everybody, everybody's happy with. And, and there's probably an element always of you, you would leave, as, as we do, we leave our best whiskies, we think, to the last. So we, we work our way, whether it's through flavour profile, so you get your peated ones at the end, um, whether it's through strength, uh, cask strength or ABV, so we get our strongest ones at the end. Most of them are a high ABV. Um, but for, for the so reputation that the, the Bowmore would have, the age of it, the, the strength of it, everything, there was a... There was no way it was going to come earlier in the night, so it was always going to be the last dram out uh, in the mm. trap. So, uh, uh, I think there's a few times we've had early drams have scored highly and have been popular. As we get through the or that fourth, fifth dram, certainly um, everyone's a little bit more loquacious in terms of the descriptors, uh, descriptors um, uh, and probably a bit more generous in their scoring and, and they're a little bit possibly rose-tinted. However, I would say that Bowmore is phenomenal. And, and in some cases, we've had things like the last drama of the night's been a, a Mortlich 25-year-old or a Glenallachy 25-year-old, and, and they've been top drams as well. So, um, I, yeah, there's probably a wee bit of influence of... Um, five cast strength or four and a half cast strength drinks as you get towards that back end have aided the scoring being very generous towards the back end but I do think that Bowmore would stand up on its own yep. saying that and, and I, I touch on the, the Arbeg conversation that we had earlier on um, with Jeff um, I wouldn't dive straight into that Bowmore I wouldn't have that as my first dram of the night I, I need to build up to something that's got a huge amount of flavour to it, like an Ardbeg or, or, or like that Bowmore, where you want to set it up, you want to build up and, and, and 
Yeah, part it might be tolerance, but part of it is is that appreciation of flavours as you as you slowly build up to a, a crescendo of of um, um, whiskey. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Ruth. <laughs> a thumbs up on it, good. Nothing would quite measure up to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think late night, I think it's just a. Phenomenal drama, for ab- absolutely phenomenal. So, and I can't find one for love nor money. So, whoever uh, bought that, we go that for whoever, no. whoever bought that bottle from the, the, the website that Phil Furby's <laughs> out loud earlier on, um, I hope you can sleep tonight. I hope you're not feeling too guilty. That's our five drams tonight. That's our five Very good. chocolates, our, our whiskey and chocolate pair night. Thank you so much for, for coming along on the journey with us, uh, not only tonight, but this year. The fun we've had, the whiskies we've shared, it's been great fun. It's a lot of work for us, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. Whiskey is best when it's shared. Whiskey is best when it's shared with friends. I think through the course of the year, we've made a lot of good friends. We're on first name terms with so many more people now. People who we've enjoyed, loved sharing a drama this year. Um, I, I speak for on behalf of the group, the, the, the Whiskey and Cigar Club, that we've had great fun doing this. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be able to do them a few more months yet uh, into next year um, with, with what's going on. However, we've got one set up for uh, the 22nd of January. Uh, I think it's, that's Friday, the 22nd of January, which is our um, Burns tasting uh, night, which is... Uh, is going to be the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop favourites. And then in February, we're looking at Campbelltown and some bottles from there as well. So a Campbelltown premium one. However, as I cap on this, I, I'd like to thank everybody for coming along and having fun. Um, these have helped um, me through the, the lockdown and 2020. Um, we're now at the back end of, of a pretty heavy year. Um, um, and, and hopefully... Let's hope 2021 is going to be a much better year. So um, with that said, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year when it comes and that 2021 is going to be a great year for you. Um, cheers. Thank you. And and, and gentlemen, just a, a little word of warning for the next time. If you decide via your phone that you are going to go and purchase a whiskey oh. quite quickly from the tastings, make sure that you don't have the notifications put on your emails popping up on your laptop. <laughs> ah. <laughs> now, it's not the Bowmore. It's not the Bowmore. Ah. But it's just popped up the Aberdeen Whiskey Shop notification. Confirmed order. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Th- thanks everyone uh, if we will stay on post post this mm-hmm. if anybody wants to stay with us have a few more drinks have a bit of a laugh chat about whiskey chat about life chat about whatever um please feel free to stay on on the line and, and have a wee bit of crack with us um we, we'd love that so thank you very much everyone it's been a great night and we'll speak to you later cheers yeah. thanks joe thank, thank you much, joe. Thank well done joe Bye. Right, so that is the end of the Whiskey and Cigar Club uh, tasting of the five pairings with chocolates. Uh, for me, the, the first whiskey was a cracking whiskey. The, the last one was a cracking one, but 266 quid a bottle. In fact, I'm just reading there, you can buy it now um, from a shop. Which one is it? For 499 Here we go. On Whiskey Kingdom, Kingdom for £499 for that particular whiskey, the Bowmore, which is the Bowmore 20 three-year-old um yeah stunning stunning whiskey but something i'll I'll never ever be able to afford just to have a bottle you, you buy a whiskey what do you do you drink it that's that's what you do so um that's it what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stop the stream now um i'm gonna go and walk the dog it probably needs a shit and um, i'll need to pick up a shit from from the neighbor's garden probably um i'll go and do that and um, i'll be back on later on and uh listen thank you very much for for tuning in and we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Is this the point to get music on? <laughs> <laughs>